The Challenge of the Yukon. Hong King! Hong, you huskies! <laughs> the Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Bob James patted the head of Tsar, his great Dane, as they sat together in Bob's small cabin near the outskirts of Selkirk. The big dog sensed that he was the subject of conversation and seemed to listen intently as his young master talked to Ed Rance, half-owner of Bob's claim. Where do you move into my cabin, Bob? It's lonesome for you here now that your father's dead. Oh, there's some room for both Tsar and me in your cabin, Ed. Zar's a big dog. He takes up more room than a man. Well, I thought you might keep Zar here in this one if he has to sleep in a cabin. It's close enough to mine. Oh, you wouldn't like that, would you, old boy? He likes to sleep right beside my bed. Anyway, I'll get you to being alone. Yeah, shoot yourself. You're welcome to come any time you want to. Thanks, Ed. It was nice of you to think of it. The least I do is try to take your dad's place, if possible. Of course, you're old enough now to get along. If only Dad could have lived. After all his hard work to die just when we finally struck gold. Yep, it was too bad. But at least you're going to be a rich man. Yeah, if we work hard enough, we should get enough out of it in a year to be independent. I wouldn't say that exactly. Split two ways the way it is, I think we'll have to work a little longer than that. I'd like to go to college. I hope it won't be too long before I can afford it. Mm. If I could buy you out of wood, but I uh, just ain't got money. If Dad only hadn't had that accident, the three of us could have worked it out much faster. Yep. Well, I guess I'll be running along. Uh, sure you don't want to move over with me, huh? Oh, thanks, Ed, but Zar and I will get along. If I like dogs better, I'd say bring him. But he's such a big brute, I've always been a little afraid of him. I know, but he's gentle as a kitten. Those jaws of his could almost bite a man's head off. <laughs> Zar wouldn't bite anyone unless he tried to hurt me, would you, boy? Huh? <laughs> well, I'll see you at the claim tomorrow, Bob. Good night. Good night, Ed. Now, oh, see here. What are you wagging that tail for? You don't have to act so happy just because Ed left. You never liked him, did you, fella? I wonder why. It was almost two weeks later. A light snow had fallen and the temperature had dropped. Bob, snugly wrapped in fur robes, stepped silently in his cabin, Tsar lying beside his cot. Suddenly, the huge dog raised his head, his ears pricked forward. Tsar! Uh, Tsar, what's wrong with you, fella? Did you hear something, boy? No. Oh, wait, I'll put some shoes on. All right, all right, boy, I'll let you out. Calm down now. Suppose you heard a fox or something. Yeah, maybe I better take my gun. What is it, Czar? What is it, boy? You got something up that tree? Take dog away. Him try to kill me. Chia, is that you in a tree? Dog, him chase me. Get back, Czar. Get back. It's all right, boy. Why are you prowling around here this time of night, Chia? Come down. I'll hold, Czar. Me go home. Oh, but you live on the other side of town. What are you looking for? Did you drop something? Uh, yeah. I, I guess this is what you dropped. A knife. Me pull knife when dog come. Uh-huh. You've been drinking. I'm going to keep this knife for tonight. I'll give it to you tomorrow. I'll go on home. Me weren't. I'll give it to you when you're sober. Now get out of here before I let this dog go. Hey, hold it, Tommy. Tommy. Hmm. That's funny, Zar. He must have been trying to steal something when you heard him. His tracks lead right to our cabin. It 
It was early morning, two days later. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police drove his dog team along the trail leading to Selkirk. His big lead dog, King, running ahead, suddenly stopped, and Sergeant Preston halted the team as he heard a distant noise. Oh, yeah, that's Sounded like an avalanche. Have a look at it, fella. Hun King! Ah, ah, you husky! Oh, King! Ah, oh, you huskies! Why, it's Zor, fella. I must be buried under that snow. I'll help you, boy. Now, oh, never mind, fella. We'll find him if he's here. There's his hand. Bob, all right. Pull him out. Bob! Bob! Well, at least he's alive. Bob, can you talk to me? Uh, now, what? What happened? Well, you were buried in snow. There must have been an avalanche. <laughs> Zar. He's all right, isn't he? Yes, Bob. He wasn't caught in it. I heard him barking, and when I got here, he was trying to dig you out. Yeah, I'll carry you to my sled. Guess no bones are broken. No, I'm just bruised. Maybe I could walk. I'll get you back to your cabin right now. You can try walking later. And you remember what happened, Bob? Well, I I was walking past the cliff, and Zar was far behind me, and suddenly I thought I heard an explosion. It must have been the ice or rock cracking. I guess I yelled when I saw it coming, and I couldn't get out of the way. Did you see anybody around? No. No, I didn't. I was supposed to meet Ed at our claim. He said last night that he was going early today. Otherwise, he'd have been there. It's a lucky thing for you that Zar was with you. I would never have known you were buried under that snow. Yes, I guess it is lucky I have him. I'm beginning to wonder if... What were you going to say, Bob? No, oh, I... I guess I'm just imagining things. Tell me what's bothering you. <laughs> well, I... Hey, Bob, you here? Oh, yes, Ed. Come on in. Hello, Ed. Oh, hello, Tracy. I thought there was your dog team out there. What's wrong, Bob? What happened? He uh, got caught in an avalanche. Have you been over at your claim? We knew I overslept. I just stopped to see if Bob left yet. Are you hurt much, Bob? No, just bruised. I guess we better take him over to my cabin where I can take care of him. No, I'm all right. He'll be up tomorrow. Is there anything I can do? Why, uh, I wonder if you'll get some tea from your cabin for me, Ed. I've run out. Why, sure, sure. I'll run over and get it right now. Anything else you need? No, that's all, Ed. I'll be right back. You, uh, have lots of tea in your cupboard, Bob. Did you send him away on purpose? Yes, Sergeant. I wanted to talk to you. I was afraid you'd leave me with him. Afraid I'd... Well... He didn't oversleep, Sergeant. I went to his cabin before I started for the mine. Funny things have been happening to me. Well, Chia, the Indian, was prowling around my cabin with a knife the other night. Oh? Uh-huh. Zar chased him. Now this happened today. Zar saved me again. Why should Ed lie about going to the mine? He keeps wanting me to move to his cabin and leave Zar here in this one. He does? No, I... I guess maybe you'll think I'm just nervous and imagining things. After all, he was my father's partner. No, Bob, you may be perfectly right. I've never been quite satisfied with the explanation of your father's death. You mean maybe he was... Your father knew too much about dynamite to be careless with it, Bob. The accident that killed him could have been planned. But there's no proof. That's just the point. We can't be sure and we can't take any chances. If something happens to you, Bob, that claim will be Ed's. That's right. I'll stay with you tonight. Tomorrow we'll talk it over and find a way to get at the truth. Oh, that was a fine breakfast, Sergeant. I feel a lot better. Can you walk all right? Yes. My knee hurts some, and I'm still a little weak. Ed should be here soon. Uh, remember what you have to do now. I will. It's kind of hard to believe that Ed could really be planning to harm me. He was such a good friend of Dad's. Some men will do anything for money. Morning. Hello, Ed. Oh, hi. There is hardly room for me in here with them two big animals. <laughs> I guess you're right. I'll put them out for a while. Here, King. Come on, Zion. I'll let you go for a while. That dog of yours is certainly powerful, Bob. I wish I had him on my team. I'm taking a heavy load to Moose Jaw day after tomorrow, and he'd be a big help. Well, why don't you borrow him, Sergeant? I'll let you have him. Oh, no, thanks. I think my dogs can handle it. Yeah, it might do the critter good to get a little exercise for a change. He, he's getting too fat. Ed's right, Sergeant. I haven't put Zara in harness for a long time. Why don't you take him? I'm going to spend most of the time resting up here in the cabin, and Zara won't be getting out the way he should. Well, if you really think you can spare him. I sure I can. 
I owe you a favor after saving my life the way you did. All right, Bob, I'll take you up on that. Czar knows me, and he'll be easy to handle. How long are you going to be gone, Chris? Well, I'm leaving day after tomorrow. That's uh, Thursday. And I'll be back anywhere from three days to a week, depending on the weather. I'll have Czar ready for you early Thursday morning. Who there? Jib Lynch, kid. You bring more fire water? Yep. Thought you might like some. Hey, uh, want you to help me with another job like the last one. No, no. We not go Bob's cabin. Him got big dog. The dog isn't there now. He won't be back for three days or more. This time I'm going to help you. What we do? We'll go to his cabin tonight. Tonight? We have to go tonight. This is Thursday. We'll have three days to destroy any evidence before, uh, before anybody gets there. You sneak into the cabin after he's asleep and stab him. While you're doing it, I'll set fire to the cabin. The body will be burned. Nobody will know he's been stabbed. There's no danger for you. Me no like. You have to do it, Chia, or I'll see that you're blamed for Bob's father's murder. Me help you. You get in trouble with law, you tell. You've been in a lot of trouble with the law. They'll believe me, not you. I'll give you enough money to get out of this country if you do this for me. Yeah. Me do. Good. Come to my cabin late tonight. You'll have to help me. <laughs> Sleep all right. If the cabin door is locked, we'll have to wake him. Otherwise, I'll light a match so you can see where his cot is. No light match. Fire and stove plenty. That's right. You'll be able to see by that. Careful now. Here's the door. Just locked. There he is, in that cot. I'll set the cabin of fire from outside. Started. Me help. Go with my cabin. You're under arrest. What? Run, Chia. After him, Tango. Don't you try to run, Chia. Have your cabin. Me no run. Take him away. Sergeant. Sergeant, did you get him? Keep this Indian covered, Bob. I'll get Ed. Right, Sergeant. Get over here. All right, King. Off you, boy. Good work, fella. Get up, Ed. You're not hurt. Get back there with Bob and Chia. Dead dog. Keep away from me. On your feet. Get going. You all right, Bob? Yeah, I'm all right. Bob. I thought you were... I heard you yell. You heard him yell, all right. But we expected something to happen tonight, so Bob was under the cot. Chia stabbed a pillow. My cabin, I... I guess we can't save it, Sergeant. You can live with Ed's, Bob. He won't be needing it. He'll be living in one with bars on the window. You better go over and get Czar, Bob. He's tied to a tree where I was hiding. King and I will take care of these two, won't we, boy? <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.